Hi guys, um, today we're, we are going to be working on the infamous uh, create a box from a flat piece of cardboard uh, word problem. Hopefully I said that. That's like a t tongue twister for me. Okay, so before we, we get to the, that fun problem, let's go ahead quickly review, review how to find the volume of a box. So to find the volume of the box, we are going to use the formula. So we have length times width times height. Cool. All right, so in this case, uh, how long is this? So this box is 4M long, 4 meters long. Most of the time, um, I don't include the units of measurement, but sometimes I forget if I'm supposed to put meter, meter square, or meter cube, and I'm hoping that if I include the units, that will remind me. How wide is this box? So again, we're going to multiply length with height. The box is 3 meters wide. And how high is this box, or how tall is it? It is 2 meters high. I know that you know that the product of 4, 3, and 2, uh, wait, 4 times 3 is 12, 12 times 2 is 24. Uh, hopefully I did that right, okay? So I was trying to do it in my head, but, you know, things happen. Okay, so 4 times 3 is 12, 12 times 2 is 24. Yeah, okay. Sorry, sometimes I doubt myself. Okay, cool. So we know, th we know that there's a unit involved, but... Uh, we know that there's a unit involved, but the question is, how are we going to write it? Uh, the popular mistake is that students will just write meters because we have meter, meter, meter. But we have to think about what's going on, the operation. We're not adding them. If we were adding them, then we will say meters plus more meters plus more meters equals still meters. But the operation between them is a multiplication. So it's meter times meter times meter. If you had treated the unit like the variable x, we would say, okay, x times x times x. We will use exponents for repeated factors. So in this case, we are going to use exponents for that unit. So meter times meter times meter. We got three of them. So be meters cubed. You know, so in school, we'll say meters cubed. Outside of school, we, we don't say that. We say cubic meters, okay? So, fantastic. Cool. Now, is this problem on the test? Of course not, because you're too cool for that. But we're doing this problem to uh, set, it up, set us up for this fun problem. Okay. So, the fun problem reads, uh, use a graphing calculator to answer the following. Round all answers to two decimal places. So, let me go ahead and remind myself of that. Because uh, just in case I get nervous, I know right away where to round to. Fantastic. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So, for the prompt. Okay. So, it reads, uh, a box with no top is to be made from a 20-inch by 26-inch cardboard by cutting equal size squares from each corner and folding up the sides. Let X be the length of the side of the square to be cut from each corner. Okay. That's like a lot of information. Okay. Um, I'm supposed to read the problems, but I want to have a sense of what's going on. Okay. So we have a, a cardboard, a, a flat sheet of cardboard. It is 20 inches by 26 inches. So the shorter side should be 20 inches and the longer side should be 26 inches. Let's go ahead and do that. So uh, this appears to be the shorter side. So we're going to call this uh, 20 inches. And then this appears to be the longer side. So we're going to say that this is the 26 inch side. Okay, so what's going on? Uh, we are going to take this cardboard box and then we're going to cut off some squares, some squares of, of side. I have no idea. Okay, from the top. A box with no top is to be made from a 20 inch by 26 inch cardboard by cutting equal size squares from each corner and folding up the sides. Okay, let X be the length of the side of the square. Okay, so we're cutting out squares uh, with side X. Cool. Uh, let X be the length of the side of the square to be cut from each corner. That's nice. Problem A. Express the volume V of the box as a function of X and indicate its domain. So pretty much how we, we, we want to do what it says. You know, we want to write a, an expression for, for volume in terms of X. Cool. Now, to find the volume, we're going to use the formula, which is length times width times height. So uh, our first goal is to uh, write expressions for the length, width, and height of this box. So let's go ahead and do this. So 
Um, this side of the box is 26 inches long. The whole way across is 26 inches, but that doesn't mean that the width of the box is 26 inches because we don't have all 26 of them. We're going to cut out some squares, okay? So uh, from here to here, that should measure X. Uh, this side right here should measure X. And the question is, how much do I have left over? So all the way across, we have a grand total of 26 inches. But we're going to take out this piece. So we have 26 minus the side from this square minus this side from this other square. So the whole way across is 26 inches. But for our, our box, it's going to be 26 minus 2x. So that will be the length. Fantastic. Cool. Now, what about the shorter end of the stick or the width? The whole way across is 20 inches, but the width of our box is not going to be 20 inches because, look, we punched out some squares. So, we know that this length represents X because uh, what's so special about a square? All the sides are the same. Okay. This side represents X. Okay. The whole way across uh, is 20 inches, but we remove this square and this square. Okay. So the whole way across is 20 minus the length of this square minus the length of that other square and that gives us a grand total, hopefully you can read this, of 20 minus 2x and the units are inches. Sorry, I get excited and I forget to put the units. So the width is given by 20 minus 2x, okay? Let me go ahead transpose that to this box right here. So the longer side, that would be 26 minus 2x. Uh, the shorter side, we'll say that's the width, 20 minus 2x. So we have the length, we have the width, but what is the height? So the height is whatever this is. So remember, we are cutting away uh, squares of size x. So when we fold it up, this is going to be the height. Okay. So we have the length, the width, the height. Let's go ahead and do this. So we have v or volume equals length, which is... 26 minus 2x times the width which is 20 minus 2x and then the height will give us x so we nailed it express the volume v done as a function of x so v depends on x so v is a function of x but now we have to indicate the domain Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and do this. What we're going to do, uh, we're going to look at uh, each side and then see what, what the domain would have to be. So I'm going to start off with the height. Okay, so um, in this case, uh, length needs to be non-negative. It actually needs to be bigger than zero. So we're going to say that for the domain, x has to be bigger than zero. Uh, why? We can't have the box be zero inches high. It could be 0 0.1 inches, but it has to be bigger than zero. So uh, that's it. There's nothing to solve for. So, so far we know that uh, for the domain, x has to be bigger than zero. But what else? Let's go ahead take the length. And length is also non-negative, so it has to be bigger than zero. So we have 26 minus 2x. Let's go ahead and make that greater than zero. And then you take your time, handle it. Let's go ahead and solve for x. After we subtract 26 from both sides, sorry, my paper was moving. That will leave us with negative 2x is greater than negative 26. To finish it off, to get rid of the times 2, let's go ahead and divide both sides by negative 2. But bear in mind that whenever we divide both sides by a negative number, uh, we have to reverse the direction of the inequality symbol. It's not because teacher said so, it comes from math, okay? But we don't have time to go into that. So what do we know in terms of the domain? <coughs> we know that x has to be bigger than zero, and at the same time, x has to be under 13. So x has to be bigger than 0 and less than 13. Let's see if we need to restrict it even more. So let's go ahead look at the width. Okay. So remember measurement is non-negative or length is non-negative. So this also has to be bigger than 0. Okay. So we have domain 20 minus 2x is greater than 0. Oh sorry this is uh, gonna too sloppy. Sorry about that. Good thing I already passed this class. 
All right, so let's go ahead, isolate the variable term. We'll subtract 20 from both sides. I'm out of space, so let me go ahead and indent. And when we do, we have negative 2x is greater than negative 20. Okay, we take our time to isolate the variable to get rid of the times negative 2. Let's go ahead, divide both sides by negative 2. And let's not forget that whenever we multiply or divide by a negative, we got to reverse the direction of the inequality symbol. So our statement should read x is less than 10. Okay, what do we know for the domain? We know that x has to be bigger. We, oh, sorry. we know that x has to be greater than 0. At the same time, it has to be less than 13. But this restricts it even more. So not only does it have to be less than 13, it has to be less than 10. So altogether, we're going to say that the domain is that x has to be bigger than 0. And at the same time, it has to be under 10. So let's just go ahead and write that the domain um, x has to be greater than 0. And it has to be less than 10. Okay. We, are asked, we were asked to... Uh, spit out uh, the, I'm sorry, spit out the volume and then also list the domain. Cool. All right. Problem B. Problem B. It would be nice if I can project it. Sorry. I get excited when it comes to math. Problem B reads, find the size of the cutout squares that will make the maximum volume. Okay. So we want to find uh, the size of the cutout squares and the squares measure, uh, it's a square with side X. I mean, if you wanted to say length and width and you say it's a square with dimensions X by X, but it's up to you how you want to phrase it. Okay. Find the size of the cutout squares that will make the maximum volume. Whenever you want to find the maximum anything, you need to have um, some peak, okay? So no matter what that function looks like, you need to have some high point, okay? So let's go ahead, uh, graph our function to find the volume, and then we'll uh, take into consideration the domain, okay? So let's go ahead, enter it. It would be nice if I had it turned on. And then let me go ahead, clear that from a previous problem. Uh, one of the questions that I get is, uh, do we have to uh, simplify the product? Uh, no, no, uh, I, I wouldn't. I mean, you could if you're, if you're an overachiever, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't waste my time doing that, okay? Uh, so um, let's go ahead, punch it in. And then um, I've used this calculator before this problem. So if I hit graph, I may not get a nice uh, viewing window. That, that was a nice viewing window for an earlier problem. So let's come back home. Let's go to the standard viewing window. So we're going to do zoom standard, which is, uh, which is option six. So zoom six. And then, um, yeah, this is not a, a, a nice window. Why? Because I want to find the maximum something, okay? So I need to see a hump right there or a peak. I don't see it. But let's go ahead, adjust our window so we just focus on the domain. So the domain is that, who put a comma right there? Oh, sorry about that, guys. If I scratch it out, it's going to look even worse. But it's okay. I wasn't going to sleep tonight if, if I didn't correct that, okay? So the domain, we have that x has to be uh, between 0 and 10. So let's go ahead and adjust the window. Okay, so we hit window. And then the x min to, from 0 to 10. And then I'm cool with the with the x scale. I don't touch those. So let's go ahead and hit graph. And again, we want to see a hump right there. We want to see a maximum point or a peak. And no. Okay, so what are we going to do? We can either like trace this to see what's going on, but um, let's go ahead and look at the table. Okay, so we're going to do second table, and we're going to look at the values. Wow, I'm counting by 100. Uh, that's not convenient for this problem because we want to go from 0 to 10, and in this case, we're going from 0 to 100. So that's way out of our domain. So let's go ahead, change the table settings. So the table settings is, uh, is the behind key for window. So we're going to do second window. And then the table start, where do we want to start counting from? If the domain is from 0 to 10, then I guess we'll start at 0. And then the triangle table, that's a change in table. So whatever we're counting by. Uh, a moment ago, I was counting by 100 because I needed that for an er earlier problem. But let's go ahead, delete that, and let's just count by one. I mean, can you count by two? I mean, you can count by whatever you want, but I'll just do one, okay? So I think we're good. Let's go back to table. So we're going to do second table. 
Okay, so um, again, we want to find a, a maximum point. So we want to pay attention where the function is increasing and then all of a sudden it starts dipping. So we want the function values going up and then we want the function values going down. So when x equals 0, y is 0, uh, function value so far is 432, 704, 840, 864, and we just dipped, okay? So uh, I need at least uh, 864 for the y, but uh, I'll just put a little buffer. Uh, uh, I could put 900. Uh, I'll just put 1,000, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to adjust the window, and uh, we need to have uh, at least 864. But um, I'll put an extra buffer. So uh, 900, uh, 1,000. Let's make an even 1,000. Cool. Oh, fantastic. Look at that. We can see a, a high a, a peak right there. So we'll be able to find the maximum. Okay. So uh, back to problem B. So it says find the size of the cutout squares that will make the maximum volume. Okay. So we want to find the maximum something. So calculator, second calc maximum okay so we're gonna do second calc and then we want option four so you can hit the digit four or we scroll down to maximum fantastic so the maximum point is right here I need you to put your cursor anywhere to the left of it so somewhere over here and we use our side arrows not the up or down the side arrows so the maximum is right there, but uh, we can't just put enter because it says left bound. So put your cursor somewhere to the left. And then we hit enter somewhere to the right. Then we hit enter. And then we use our, our side arrow to guess. So we'll put it um, as close as possible to where we believe the maximum is. And then uh, our answer is not rational, at least I don't think so. We have too many digits. Uh, I believe we had highlighted where to round to. So it says round all answers to two decimal places. Okay, so I'm not quite sure if I need the X value or the Y value. So for that reason, I'm going to put the ordered pair solution, okay, uh, the maximum point. So uh, the X, uh, we have 3.7, that will be 4 comma and the y 867.19 got to round up that'll be 20 okay sorry that that's how i round i have to i have to, i'm thinking out loud okay cool all right so we found the maximum something let me go ahead uh put this calculator away so problem b find the size of the cutout square that will make the maximum volume so this is an ordered pair of the form of course x y and then i have to remind myself uh, what does x and y represent so x represents the length of the square so side of the square so it represents yeah the side of the square and y what does that represent well we don't have y equals but we have v equals okay so y represents the volume okay so pretend you can read that volume so problem b find the size of the cutout squares so the size is x is given by a uh, square with side x x is 374 so that will be our answer so the square you know all sides are the same so you can write your answer however you like you know we need a, a, a square with side 3.74 what are the units inches or we can just write it like if it was a, a rectangle the dimensions are 3.74 inches by 3.74 inches so that's going to be the size of the cutout square. It's a square with side 3.74 inches. I didn't feel like writing all those words, so that's why I put it like this, like length and width. Cool. Uh, and then problem C, what is the maximum volume? So we had said that this is the maximum point, and the maximum volume is given by uh, A67.20, and the units will be... Uh, units on length width and height are all inches so inch times inch times inch will give us cubic inches or inch to the third power okay so the maximum volume max volume is given by um, 867.20 inches cubed outside of the school we'll say cubic inches fantastic and we uh, attack this problem again um, 
I wouldn't be shocked if you see it on your assessment or midterm. Thanks, guys.